You turn in your Bibles to the book of 1 John in the fourth chapter. John, 1 John 4. Get it right now. It's good to be back in the house of the Lord this morning, and I desire the prayers of the church for the lesson this morning, and that uh, might be used of the Lord to read His Word and to uh, that the Holy Spirit would take it and use it for His honor and His glory. Uh, what I'm going to do ain't going to be worth uh, hollering about, but what the Lord can do and what the Holy Spirit can do, uh, that's what that's what counts. And so, right. uh, it's in His hands. All I can do is is try to say what, I, what comes to my mind and read what is in the Bible and uh, uh, let him do the rest. We, we thank the Lord this morning for the privilege that uh, he's given us to uh, stand before you this morning. And sometimes, you know, I, I get to thinking, well, uh, I'm not really doing a whole lot. And uh, I'm not. But what little I, I do, try to do, I want to thank the Lord for it. And uh, uh, I, I thank the Lord for it. Amen. And uh, so, y'all pray for us this morning as we as we try to uh, get get in the lesson in chapter four, First John, four, First John, four. Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits, whether they are of God, because many false prophets are gone out into the world. Right. Hereby or through this know ye the Spirit of God. Every spirit that confesseth that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is of God. Amen. And every spirit that confesseth not that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is not of God. Let me read this again. Every spirit that confesseth not that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. In other words, that does not accept the fact that Jesus Christ uh, ever existed. Uh, he, he, he was, he was, a, uh, he was a, 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 just a story. Uh, but anyway, every... <clears throat> let me get this right. And every spirit that confesseth not that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is not of God, and this is that spirit of Antichrist, whereof we have heard that it should come, and even now already is in the world. Ye are of God, little children, and have overcome them, because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Right. This morning, <clears throat> we... We want to encourage everyone that we can uh, that's listening and let them know that those that are saved by the blood of Jesus Christ has the Holy Spirit dwelling within them. Amen. And here the writer, John, says, Beloved, believe not every spirit. Mm -hmm. And he gives us an example of what many of them will say. That, that God, that Jesus is the Christ. And listen, let me tell you something this morning. When he says, believe not every spirit, we have that spirit in so many people out here today that will come in a, in a church, stand up and say, yes, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, and they're just as lost as a goose mm -hmm. because they do not do they do not know the Lord Jesus Christ as their Savior. And so here's why the writer of of this uh, book here is saying, "Believe not, beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits." Mm -hmm. Now, this morning, you have the ability. You that are saved. You that have the Holy Spirit dwelling within that fleshly, sinful tabernacle that you have. But you have that Holy Spirit within you. You have the ability to determine so many times 
hey, there's something that's not right. Right. Uh, and I don't know for sure what it is, and I can't place it, but there's something that's saying, whoa, there's something that's not there. And others, you can see them, and, and they may not they may not put on the best face in the world, but when they talk to you and, confer, and, and tell you about the Lord Jesus Christ, your spirit will bear witness with that spirit. And so people this morning, it's, it's just like a magnet to a piece of steel. When you see that spirit, when you feel that spirit, you can you can accept it as this. And 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 those they may be carrying a Bible under their arm, they may be wearing a thousand dollar suit, and they may be standing in a pulpit. But listen, let me tell you something. If your spirit, if your spirit does not bear witness with that, you beware. Because that's what that's what the writer here is trying to tell us this morning. Because there's many and many and many a false prophets out there that is smart as a tack. They're right. sharp as a tack. And listen, you know this morning when Jesus Christ was there and he had fasted and he was hungry and he was uh, a, probably a week and the devil come to him and he tempted him and saying, if you be the Christ, Listen, that's the same spirit this morning that exists in so many people out there in the world today. Right. And they are a, a hindrance to you. They are a servant of the Antichrist, and they will mess you up. And if the, if you let them if you let them talk to you, they'll 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 convince you that hell is an ice house. Mm -hmm. But listen, that's how wrong they are, people. And so here, the, here he says, Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits whether they are of God. And you say, well, how do we try the spirits? Well, listen, you just listen long enough. You don't have to ask him three times if he's been saved. You don't have to ask him if he believes this or if he believes that. You let him run his mouth just a little while, mm -hmm. and you'll understand real quick, listen, there's something wrong. And so he says here, you be aware of them, and you watch them because they are of Satan. And so he says, but try the spirits, whether they are of God, uh, because many false prophets are going out into the world. Now, if you would, over in 2 John, I believe it is, 2 John 7. And get over to it. In John, it just kind of gets me. 2 John, verse 7. Notice. <clears throat> For many deceivers are entered into the world who confess not that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh. This is a deceiver and an antichrist. Look to yourselves that we lose not those things which we have wrought, but that we receive a full reward. Amen. Now here he is warning us, if we let these, these uh, false spirits interfere with our life. Now notice what he says. He says that we lose not those things which we have wrought or what we have worked for. And what have we worked for? Not salvation. We've not worked for salvation. Right. The Lord Jesus Christ gave us that free. It's free. But we have work and we do work and we want to work for rewards. And here he's saying, yes, you beware of those false prophets and those false spirits. They will cause you, he says here, that we lose not those things which we have wrought, but that we receive the full reward. They will cause you, when you stand before Christ, to say, I, that these things that I did, I didn't realize it was wrong. But the thing that you will do is you will lose rewards in heaven mm -hmm. because of believing some of this stuff that's going on. And so that's the reason why this, this the writer is saying you beware of them. Now, uh, you know, uh, so many people don't realize that there's a danger out there. But listen, if your spiritual eyes could be open wide enough like that uh, uh, one of the prophets asked the Lord to open his 
helper's uh, eyes and he's seen all of the thousands of angels on, on the hill. If our eyes could be open to that, we would see all of those traps and those snares and those things out there and it was probably scare us to the point that we couldn't move amen but listen it's there people amen and that's the reason why this morning that we get in such a condition sometimes even in doubting the lord even saying lord why did you let that happen listen that's not your question and he does not have to answer that because he don't he's not subject to you to answer your questions okay yeah, what what happened and and and, and, and you know uh just the other day i you know i fell in the garden but the thing of it is uh hey it's my fault or and 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 listen i have no reason to question anything that god does or let's happen to me because listen he he takes care of me and if he wants my old body to be banged up well that's fine with me because listen He's in charge of me, people. Amen. And he, I, I'm his, and he, and that's just like me driving my old car down the road and and um, with a flat tire on it. Listen, I got the right to drive that old car with a flat tire if I want to. But listen, the car, the car, you never say, well, you shouldn't do that. Uh, but like the like the dumb ass fake, you know. Right. You know, and he warned. But it's it's these things these things that we we see happening to us. They're, they're, they're nothing that we should bellyache and complain about. But here's the thing. We should be aware of what God's Word says concerning these false prophets and how that they can trick us. Now notice in verse 9 of, of uh, 2 John 7. Of uh, 2 John. Verse 9. Whosoever transgresseth and abideth not in the doctrine of Christ hath not God. And so this morning, uh, here's, here's, we want to read this just a little bit for them. He that abideth in the doctrine of Christ, he hath, he hath both the Father and the Son. If there come any unto you and bring not this doctrine, receive him not unto you, not into your house, neither bid him God speed. Now, I'm going to tell you something. You'll slip up right there. Mm -hmm. You'll mess up. You'll just as sure as this world mess up. And you'll have, to, you'll have to ask the Lord to forgive you. But the thing of it is, some of these Jehovah's Witnesses and some of these false religions come in there and they'll try to give you all this and, and, and you say, no, I don't need it. I don't need it. Well, God bless. And it'll come out of your mouth. God, well, God bless you. Listen, it's automatic, people. But listen, you'll have to get, you'll have to ask the Lord to forgive you for that. Because what does it say? You don't bid them God's speed. In other words, you say you should say, well, you go on your way. I know your way. But anyway, for he that biddeth him God's speed is partaker of his evil deeds. Right. Beware. Beware of false doctrine. Beware of these 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 guys because listen, you'll you'll do things, you'll do things and the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit, you'd be laying there at night and try and go to bed and the Holy or sleep and the Holy Spirit will say, well, why did you do that? Mm -hmm. And he'll just as sure as this world call to your remembrance these things that are in here and, and listen, you, you better get them out, you better get rid of them because listen, they'll cause you problems. So he said here, for in verse 12, having many things to write unto you, I would not write with ink and paper, paper and ink, but I trust to come unto you and speak face to face that our joy may be full. So that was what John was saying to them concerning these false prophets here. Now back in our lesson in chapter in verse four, chapter four, he says here uh, in in uh, in verse. Uh, Three, and every spirit that confesseth not, I've already did, that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is not of God. And this is the spirit of Antichrist, whereof ye have heard that it should come, and even now already is in the world. Ye are of God, little children, and have overcome them, because greater is in he that is in you than he that is in the world. Amen. So you this morning, 
you ought to be able to walk out of this this building. You ought to be able to walk up and down this these buildings here and shout and praise the Lord. And Amen. Say, oh, I have got this spirit in me. Listen, I I have got the Holy Spirit and. The, these false prophets will not interfere with my my uh, uh, walk in the earth. Of what? Come on in, sir. And have a seat. He said, "Here, <clears throat> notice here now, because greater is He that is in you than He that is in the world." Amen. Talking about the Holy Spirit you have if you're saved. We're studying in First John four. We are of God. He that knoweth God heareth us. He that is not of God heareth us not. Hereby know we the spirit of truth and the spirit of error. So this morning we have the ability, as he has up here, he says, believe not every spirit. We have the ability here to know the difference in the spirits. And that's what he's saying here. Hereby know we the spirit of truth and the spirit of error. And so this morning when you talk to someone, when you try to be a witness to someone, when you try to help someone, listen, if these, if these spirits are even, even if you go, if you go to a church service somewhere and <clears throat> the man's up there slapping the Bible and preaching to you and that haughty spirit comes to you, listen, you just might as well turn, get up and walk out because listen, you can determine the difference in an evil spirit and a, and a godly spirit this morning. You have that ability and you need to use it. And you need to pay attention to it because, listen, it will not lead you wrong. Amen. I know I've tried it too many times and I pushed off and said, no, that can't be right. And lo and behold, it wasn't six months later I found out just exactly what he was, what they were, what they taught, everything. So. We, in verse, verse uh, uh, 7, Beloved, let us love one another, for love is of God. Amen. And everyone that loveth is born of God and knoweth God. And so this morning he is encouraging us to love one another. And, 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 and he identifies some of the ones that we should love. Uh, more so, and that's the brother. Listen, we should love one another. Uh, if we're brothers and sisters in Christ, listen, that should be closer than, than blood can. Amen. Because, listen, we have a spirit within us that was put in there by God Himself. It's, a, it's the Holy Spirit, and He comes in and He makes His abode with us, and He is the Comforter. Jesus said when He left, He said, I will not leave you comfortless. Amen. I will send you the Holy Spirit and He will be your comforter. Amen. And so this morning we can pay attention to what's in there. He said here in verse 8, He that loveth not knoweth not God. Amen. For God is love. And so this morning if, if, if there is <clears throat> if there's something in your heart this morning towards one of your brothers or sisters and listen and you can't get it right you can't understand it you need to do something because listen that's hindering you from serving the Lord like you would because right. when when he looks upon your heart he sees that heart that there's got something there that's wrong with it and listen he cannot he cannot communicate like he would he cannot he cannot be with you like one with a, with a heart of love and so here notice this in this was manifested or clearly made visible the love of God towards us because that God sent his only begotten son into the world that we might live through him Amen. So, hey he loved us that much that he gave his son you put that into your uh life and imagine how it would be you that are parents you that have children if you if you give one of your children up to save 10 we'll save 10 and six of them said fully on you mm -hmm. 
Mm-hmm. Now that's what that's the love that was manifested. He gave his son that we might be saved and that we might live with him in eternity. And so herein in verse 10 it says, Herein is love, not that we love God, but that he loved us. Amen. So people, this morning you can throw back your shoulders and you can say, Oh, I love God and I love this and I that's the reason I say no. No, you didn't do diddly squat. Mm-hmm. God did it all. Amen. He loved you. He sent His Son. He sent the Holy Spirit. And by the grace of God, you're saved. And that's the only thing. You can't boast. You cannot Amen. boast of anything because you did not do it. He ordained you. He called you in eternity. And He made it possible to have the proper offering his son jesus christ amen and he calls you that way and so we 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 have nothing to do except say thank you lord and try to and try to praise his holy name and try to serve him and try to be a witness for him and tell others about what happened to us here again he says in verse 11 beloved if God so loved us, we ought also to love one another. Amen. Now there's no reason this morning for anybody in this congregation to have aughts with another one as far as a hatred. I can understand and we can understand that there's things that I do that everybody ain't pleased with. And listen, I've got this old flesh to contend with people, and it's sinful. Mm -hmm. But the thing of it is, you should be able to look through that with the love of God and say, yeah, I understand. Because, you know, when the finger goes out this way, the thumb is coming right back. And listen, I'm just as guilty of that as everybody else, anybody else in this house. I'm guilty because I have a sinful nature. Mm -hmm. And I have these old foolish thoughts and I have things like that. But listen, people, they don't stay there. Uh, When the Holy Spirit burns my heart, they're gone. Amen. And so that that takes care of it. But the thing of it is, we just need to we just need to look a little bit closer at ourselves. And when we look at others, listen, we we need to come here first and get that moat out of our own eye, you know. Right. Before we look. And so, you know, <clears throat> beloved, he says here uh, in verse 12, no man has seen God at any time. If we love one another, God dwelleth in us and his love is perfected in us. Now that this morning is God's word. God's word is true. Every dot dot and every gentle, everything that was in the law Jesus Christ kept, and every word that he inspired writers to write down is truth. And he says, no man has seen God at any time. If we love one another, God dwelleth in us, and his love is perfected in us. And so when you love someone, and when you try to look over what's trying to hinder you, your love gets stronger. And you can get over that fence and you can come to that brother and you can say, hey, brother, I love you. Mm-hmm. I'm praying for you. And listen, it's not this old thing of pulling his mouth open and trying to cram something down it. But it's that way. So notice, hereby, in verse 13, hereby know we that we dwell in him and he in us because he has given us of his spirit. Amen. So there's that Holy Spirit. It's dwelling in us. And in our lesson, it says, believe not every spirit, but try that spirit. And what do you try it with? With that spirit that he gave you. <coughs> now, and we have seen and do testify in verse 14 that the Father sent the Son to be the Savior of of the world. Now here over in our lesson in, in, in 4 he says that there's some that don't believe that Jesus Christ came in the flesh. 
But now here he says, And we have seen and do testify that the Father sent the Son to be the Savior of the world. And he walked upon this earth in a fleshly robe of flesh, and he sinned not. Amen. And that's the gospel, people. And we have to accept that before that we can accept the love of Jesus Christ and, the, and that blood that He shed for us, that atonement made for our sin. Listen, it was a perfect sacrifice from day one until Amen. He died on the cross of Calvary. It was a perfect thing. So He said here in verse 15, notice, Whosoever shall confess that Jesus is the Son of God, God dwelleth in Him, and he in God. And notice here in our lesson over in, in 4 verse 1. But beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits. Now we can believe that spirit. Now, and he says, whosoever confess that Jesus is the Son of God, God dwelleth in him, and he in God. And we have known and believed that the love that God hath hath to us God is love and he that dwelleth in love dwelleth in God and God in him amen and so that's the the Godhead God the Father God the Son and God the Holy Spirit all of that love dwells in all of them and he give it to us he let the Holy Spirit come in he called us he saved our souls. Amen. He let the Holy Spirit come in. And that Holy Spirit dwells within this old body of mind. And listen, it guides. It, it rebukes. And it comes. And so that's how that we have a guideline that we can walk. Now he says in verse 17. Herein is our love made perfect that we may have boldness in the day of judgment because as he is so are we in the world mm -hmm. there is no fear in love but perfect love casteth out all out casteth out fear because fear hath torment he that feareth is not made perfect in love and so this morning if you fear if you fear that there might be a problem a, a problem with your salvation if you fear hell in any way listen that's what he's talking about here if you have been saved by the blood of jesus christ you cannot lose that salvation because it is perfect and and first john 3 9 says that which is born of God does not sin. Now, it's not talking about what you're looking at, this old flesh. But it's talking about the spirit within that he placed in there when you were saved. Amen. That's the Holy Spirit. That's what you got from Jesus Christ. And he placed it in here and he put claims on you. And that's what, that's what the king sin. And so this morning, this should cause the doubt to flee. If you have a if you know that you've been saved, if you can, you have a time and a place in your life where that the Lord Jesus Christ spoke to your soul and called you into Him, and you confessed your sins. Listen, people, there's nothing on this earth, there's nothing in hell, there's nothing nowhere that can undo that. Right. You're saved. And so, this morning, here He's talking about this fear. There is no fear in love. Right. But perfect love casteth out fear, because fear hath torments. He that feareth is not made perfect in love. And so this morning, people walk around and call. Uh, you ask them, uh, have you been saved? Oh, I hope so. I hope so. Listen, people, that's fear. Mm -hmm. That's fear because they don't know. And so they... They need, they need to, they need to get their head in the Bible and their knee on the floor and not leave Amen. it until the Lord, through the Holy Spirit, 
accomplish that fear and they can walk up and say, hey, I'm free. Because, listen, you're free. If you've been saved, you're free. We love Him in verse 19. We love Him because He first loved us. That's it. And so, people, that's, that's, where, that's where all of this comes from. He loved us first, and there's no, there's no uh, uh, way that you can, you can do, do away with that love because it's perfect love. And he come from, he, the Father sent him here, and he lived here, and he died here, that we could have salvation. And it was, if, if we could lose it, if we could do something or another in order to uh, reroute our path from heaven to hell, then Jesus Christ came to this world and washed his blood. Jesus Christ, the Son of God, came here and he didn't do the job. Mm -hmm. He just didn't do it. So, people, listen. You might as well understand that the devil is there. He's 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 haunting you. He's he's he he, he did Jesus Christ the same way. Like I told right. you, ago. he said, "If thou be the Son of God, cast thyself down." And it's written that the angel shall bear thee up. He said, "Get behind me, Satan! Get behind me!" That's. That's the words that Jesus used on Satan. Get thee back. And the same thing he'll do to you, people. He'll come to you of a night, he'll come to you of a day, and he'll say, Yeah, you're just an old goody goody, and you're trying to do this, and you're making out and making and pretending and all this. He'll do anything that he can to deceive you. He can't he can't lose your he can't get your soul. But man, I'll tell you what he can do. He can burn your reputation for that you can't be a witness to your children or your grandchildren right. or to your neighbors. Because, listen, he'll show you off for, uh, uh, that you're an unbeliever. And they'll say, well, if he don't believe, then I can't believe. So that's, that's, the, devil's, that's the devil's intent this morning is to get everyone that he can to disbelieve uh, or to doubt their salvation and that weakens them so that they're not a good witness for the Lord Jesus Christ. And so get over it. You're, you're, a, you're, 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 God's, you're God's children. And you're a brother to Jesus Christ. And a sister to Jesus Christ. So you're, you're, that's it. Uh, you've been saved. Uh, just uh, praise the Lord and continue going. Amen. Because that's the only, that's the only encouragement I give you. Uh, because I know, uh, I know he's, I know he's been after y'all. I know he's been after y'all a week. He has me, mm -hmm. and so I, I, I'm just blessed like you are. And he knows where to work on you. So anyway, I thank you for listening to me. Uh, I hope that I, can, I hope it's been a blessing to you, and I know it has me. And I, and I love to tell people about the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. And so. Y'all, y'all pray for one another. You pray for me, and and pray and, and and seek God's face, and get in His Word, and like I say, get down on your knee, and I, He'll come. He'll come be with you, and He'll comfort that heart because you have that Holy Spirit, and that's the Comforter. He said, "I'll send you a Comforter." Amen. So we thank y'all for listening to our lesson.